Water is everywhere. And no, we aren't talking about the Earth. Your lungs, your cheeks, your other cheeks, your blood, even 70% of your brain is all water. But that's no coincidence. Water's involved in pretty much every single thing your body does. And getting enough of it every day is a super easy first step to better metabolic health. To understand how hydration affects our health, we need to first understand hydration. When you sweat, pee, or even just breathe, you lose water. And when your body loses more fluids than it receives, you're dehydrated. Why is that? Because water delivers nutrition and carries toxic waste away from your cells, making it critical to how well your cells, tissues, and ultimately your organs function. Let's dive deeper into some of the important stuff water does at a cellular level. Metabolism occurs inside your cells, and water is the fuel your cells need to create and burn energy. Without it, your cells just can't do their job as well as they should. Changes in cell hydration can affect all sorts of important processes, from the body's response to hormones to how glucose moves in and out of cells, and even the speed of metabolism itself. In fact, one study found that drinking just 500 milliliters of water can quickly induce thermogenesis, the metabolic stage where calories are burnt, and increase energy expenditure by 24% within an hour thanks to increased metabolic rates. But without regular replenishment, dehydration can derail metabolic health indicators like blood sugar levels, weight, cholesterol, and more, all of which, in turn, can increase your risk of heart disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes. Clearly, water and metabolism are very closely connected. A combination of studies have directly linked metabolic dysfunction or the development of metabolic syndrome to low water intake and high arginine vasopressin, better known as AVP. While AVP is a key hormone in regulating body fluid homeostasis, studies have found elevated levels of vasopressin in people with obesity, diabetes, and metabolic syndrome. AVP also leads to water being stored as fat and causes dehydration, and people who habitually drink less fluids are observed to have higher AVP levels. Bottom line is, drink water and drink it often. It can significantly lower your AVP levels. But don't try to substitute water with other calorie-containing beverages like juices or energy drinks, because water in its water form is what your body needs. Speaking of sugars and calories, Hydration enhances insulin-induced glucose uptake, but when you don't drink enough water, the concentration of glucose in your bloodstream increases, leading to high blood sugar levels. This, in turn, causes higher insulin levels and stresses your kidneys as they have to work a lot harder to filter out the excess sugar. Hydration also increases your metabolic rate and, in turn, aids weight loss. Several studies have linked increased water intake to weight loss via two mechanisms, decreased feeding and increased lipolysis, the breakdown of fats and other lipids to generate energy. When your body's low on water, using up fat and glucose as energy sources becomes harder, thereby restricting your body's metabolic flexibility, which means every run, every lift, and every cardio session does less for you than it would if you just drank enough water. Plus, water reduces muscle cramps, helps connective tissues and joints function the way they should, and ensures that your heart, lungs, and other organs perform optimally, even as they ramp up activity during exercises. So if you're trying to lose weight, make water an active part of your diet. Like a great man once said, stay hydrated, stay healthy.